Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C.'s Telephonic Prayer Meeting. We call this prayer meeting a CCC. CCC stands for Congressional Communications Channel. That's what this is all about. And we would encourage you to join us. There's two ways to join us other than watch us right here on the Internet. You can pick up your phone and call us on the CCC. That phone number and access code I will give you right now. So get your pen ready, get your phone ready, and call us and pray with us and pray for us. I am the facilitator here. Yes, I'm a pastor. Yes, I'm the show host. But I want to facilitate as the Holy Spirit would lead. Now, with that in mind, I want to ask you to take your phone and call this phone number, 712-432-1690. 712-432-1690. You call that number, it will ask you for an access code, <clears throat> and that code identifies only me. It does not identify you. That access code, though, is 399 Four three zero pound three nine nine four three zero pound, and I would encourage you to call us and join us. Hear our prayer, join our prayer, and pray with us. Uh, I have a caller on the line. Hang on, Randall Rosario. Welcome to the Wiley Drake Show, and thank you for calling. I'm doing absolutely excellent. We are on the Congressional Prayer Conference now. Ladies and gentlemen, I have one of the warriors in the battle, Randall Massaro. And Randall, share with us what's on your heart, my brother. I just want to give you a quick call and maybe some prayers out to a dear friend, uh, Tanya Little Wolf of Wolf Mountain Sanctuary in Lucerne Valley, California. She's uh, been saving wolves for God knows how long. And, of course, your Wiley Drake show is, is one to welcome to come up to the sanctuary and do a story. She's in St. Mary's Hospital in Apple Valley, California, uh, under Tanya Carloni. But it's Tanya Little Wolf, and you can say a prayer, maybe give her a call later on, I think, and wish her well. She's been saving wolves for many years, and uh, she's loved by many people, and she's, she's in the hospital now at St. Mary's Hospital in Apple Valley, California. Well, Randall, what I want, to, I want to do two or three things. Number one, in just a moment, I want to have prayer for Tanya. And then number two, I want to ask you to send me an email uh, with that information, the name of the hospital, so I can call her at the hospital and, uh, and let her know we're praying for her. And then, of course, I want you to lead us in prayer as well. Now, before we go any further, though, Lord, I would come to you knowing that Thou art the great physician you can bring about healing, Lord, and we know you can. Here's a lady who's dedicated her life uh, to the natural out there, Lord, and to the wolves and so forth. And we pray for her, Lord. We know she loves you. We know she loves God. And we pray for her. And I ask, Lord, for the doctors and nurses that would wait upon her, that they would have wisdom to know what to do. And, Lord, we pray for her. And now, uh, Brother Randall, if you'll send me that email, and any of you would like to send an email to me, you're welcome to do so as well. It's wileywiley at hhe.net. But Randall, if you'll send me the name of the hospital and so forth, I will uh, call her and pray with her over the phone. And then, Randall, would you, as a man of God, believing in God, and believing as a warrior, to save our environment. Would you lead us in prayer, please? Okay. Thank you, Pastor Wiley. Father God, we come to you in your son's name, Jesus Christ. We'd like to, again, uh, praise you and, and give thanks to you, Lord, Father God, for what you do, not only for people, but also in, in helping us with the fight to save these animals. Yes, uh, Lord. The ones that you gave dominion over, uh, the that we gave dominion, you gave us dominion over. We, we we struggle so hard to to walk in your path and, right. and 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 do your deeds here on earth. And yet, uh, this isn't just for man, but for animal alike. And again, we praise you in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, quite often I'm asked, why do I associate with a man by the name of Randall? Why do I associate with uh, Tanya and others? 
that indeed are animal rights people? Well, I do it for one reason and one reason only. I don't do it for the notoriety. I don't do it because it's popular. I do it because God said do it. God said, as Randy already pointed out, Randall already pointed out, that we are to be good stewards. That is, we're to have dominion over the animals. And dominion over the animals doesn't mean we just put them aside and treat them bad. It means we're to take care of them. The Bible makes it very clear that a man who would not take care of his own animal, i.e. a donkey or horse or a camel, uh, is worse than a reprobate. And how much more for those who would abuse them, who would hunt them down and kill them, just, quote, for the sport of killing. And Lord, we know that's bad. And, and, and I thank you for Randall, and I thank you for his dear wife and his family. And for those that stand, uh, and we do what we do because God says do it. Randall Massaro, thank you so much. God bless you. You're welcome to stay on as long as you'd like. You're on the communications line. Others may join us, but we're going to continue on to talk about some other things as well. But we do thank you and ask that you would send me an email with Tanya's information on it. I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Pastor Wiley Draper. Please come on up and visit us at the Wolf Sanctuary in Lucerne Valley, California. And I'm rushing to the hospital right now. So thank you very much, and I will get the email out to you soon. Okay, and you tell her that we put her name, Tanya Little Wolf, on the prayer list as of today. And we will be praying for her. And uh, that goes around the world. You tell her people all over the world are praying for Tanya Little Wolf. And God bless her. And uh, thank you for sharing this with us. Thank you very much, Pastor Wiley Drake, and the Wiley Drake Show. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. God bless. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's what this show is all about. Here's a man who I love and appreciate and work with and uh, uh, I'm involved with over time. And now, all of a sudden, uh, he comes on the program not to promote his program, not to promote him, but to promote prayer for Tanya Little Wolf. And uh, she's well up in years, and uh, but we just pray for her and pray that if it be God's will, he would allow her to be around a little bit longer. And uh, Lord, we pray for healing for her. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I had some calls after the show yesterday and even this morning uh, from several people that said they watched the show yesterday and they would like to see it again. Well... Let me say good news, bad news. Good news is people like to show. Bad news is we had a technical glitch yesterday, and that show was not placed in the archives. wasn't my fault. I, I tried every way I could, but it just wouldn't work. So I had several people today say, you need to reiterate some of the things that you talked about uh, on that show and do them again. What I titled the show yesterday was... The title, a one-word title, and typically I do not title the show until after the show has already been completed, and then based on what happened during the show, uh, I then title the show. But yesterday I titled the show, and I'm going to do it again today, and hopefully this one will be in the archive. But I'm going to title the show uh, one word, a plural word, and that word is solutions solutions. I'm going to talk to you today, ladies and gentlemen, when we look at the uh, trauma that's going on with our wildlife, when we look at the trauma that's going on with our young people, when we look at the trauma that's going on with our government, when we look at the circumstances that we find ourselves in, ladies and gentlemen, we need to do something about it. And I'm here to tell you that uh, at the end of this week, once this week is over, I'm going to be making another trip. I'm going to take another trip to our nation's capital. And I would remind you that many of us that claim the name of Jesus that are Judeo-Christians, i.e. we believe in Yahweh God, we believe in Yeshua HaMashiach, and we pray to Him and with Him and for ourselves under Him, and so I would say to you that when I go to Washington, D.C., we always remind ourselves that Washington, D.C. is no longer the District of Columbia. We renamed it because Columbia was a false god, and we don't believe in false gods. We believe in a god, that is, the god, 
Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach. Now, with that in mind, we declared that the place called Washington would no longer be called Washington District of Columbia, but we would call it Washington District of Christ. That is the first solution that I believe we could bring before you today. We need to declare that Washington is a district of Christ. And we need to declare that God is in charge of our nation. And because we know that he is. Now, I want to remind you that uh, there is something coming uh, in the very near future in our nation's capital. And that particular a thing that's going on in the nation's capital is being sponsored and held by an organization in Washington at 801 G Street. 801 G Street is where the Family Research Council is. Now I want to tell you something, folks. You may not agree with everything Family Research Council does or says. You may not agree with Tony Perkins, who's the leader, or you may not agree with their chaplain, Pierre Bynum, but both them are godly men, and they have godly wives that serve with them, and other men there uh, are godly as well. We have a gentleman there by the name of Kenya uh, Curitan, Kenya, K-E-N-Y-N, Kenya Curitan, and he is the vice president of the church ministries there at the Family Research Council. And by the way, he is a Southern Baptist. I believe Southern Baptists are good people. Now, we can get off track. We can go down the wrong way. We can be stuck on domino, denominational stupidism. But I believe, by and large, we are a good denomination. And I believe Kenya uh, Corton is a godly man and, and doing a great job at the family research. Now, the... the uh, motto for the Family Research Council, and I want to give you one of those other solutions. A solution to our problem in America is their motto. Their motto is faith, family, and freedom. That is one of our solutions. We need to turn to that. We need to turn to faith, family, and freedom. And by the way, our motto here on the Wiley Drake Show, on the Congressional Prayer Conference, of Washington, D.C., is justice, mercy, and faith. If we seek after justice, mercy, and faith, Micah in chapter 6, verse 8, and Jesus in Matthew 23, 23 said, the solution to our problem is justice, mercy, and faith. And we need to claim those solutions. Now, uh, they're going to be having a... Uh, meeting coming up on the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. And there will be a great number, a great number of solutions will be talked about and distributed verbally and visually and prayerfully. Now, what's going to happen? That group will be there, and there's a great number of great speakers that are going to be there, and they will be offering a great deal of solutions from many different perspectives. First of all, they will be addressing the erosion of religious liberty. We see erosion quite often in nature, where water and wind erode. Well, we've had a great deal of erosion in religious liberty in our nation. And they're going to be addressing how your church and my church can organize to make a positive salt and light difference in your community. How you can make a positive. Listen, folks, Jesus didn't suggest or offer salt and light as a suggestion. He said, you are the light. You are the salt. The question is, how salty is your salt and how bright is your light? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll join us in Washington, D.C. on the 20th, 21st, and 22nd, you will hear a great number of those solutions offered by a great number of godly men. And it will also talk about uh, transforming your church, 
transforming your church through prayer <coughs> and churches and pastors and the rapid legal climate will be addressed by Eric Stanley, director of the Church Project and Pulpit Initiative for Alliance Defending Freedom. We will give an important presentation on Friday morning. Is your church, this is a question, is your church, I don't care what denomination it is, I don't care what background it is, but the question is, and the question we're going to be asking and dealing with is your church and our synagogue, and I added that part, but is your church and synagogue ready for the Supreme Court ruling if they rule that Bible marriage is not honored anymore? Is your church ready for that? And is your church ready if they do indeed honor the Bible and say no? to same-sex marriage? Is your church ready for that? I hope you are. You see, uh, we're going to give, they're going to be giving some important presentations on Friday morning for Mary Stanley and to help answer that question. Is your church ready? Folks, one of the best solutions is to make sure your church is ready. And we encourage you, if you'd like to find out more about this event, you can find out about it by simply going uh, to or calling this number, 800-225-4008, 800-225-4008. Call them and let them know, ladies and gentlemen, that you would like to be a part of what is going on there in Washington, D.C. More solutions are going to be offered, folks. It's time for us to quit looking at the problems. We know what the problems are. We know the problems are Muslim. We know the problems are sin. We know what the problems are. The time has come. We must find some solutions. We're going to hear a couple of brothers. The Benham brothers are going to be sharing. Uh, they're the founders of the Benham companies. Their HGTV show was canceled for bad language? No. Because it wasn't interesting? No. It was canceled due to their stand for biblical marriage. And their show was canceled. That ought not happen in the United States of America, one nation under God. Well, also we'll hear some other solutions from a bishop. Bishop Wellington Boone, Bishop Wellington Boone will share a solution with us. One of our solutions is to have fellowship with other world churches. Bishop Wellington Boone is the founder of an organization called Fellowship of International Churches, and he will be offering some solutions to our problems. And by the way, there's another gentleman that will be offering some solutions. He is a former commander of Delta Force. That's big time, folks. Former commander of Delta Force. And now the executive vice president of Family Research Council, Lieutenant General William Boykin, great mighty military man, will be sharing as Vice President of FRC, Family Research Council. He will be sharing with us some solutions, and I hope you'll be there to hear those solutions. Well, there's another gentleman that's going to be sharing, again, some solutions from a different perspective. Here is a man who was the fire chief of Atlanta. He was also... President Obama's appointee for the U.S. Fire Administration for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Great accolades. However, he was fired. He was fired from the Atlanta Fire Department. Why? Because he stood for biblical marriage. 
That ought not happen in the fire department, the police department, or anywhere else, especially in the United States of America. We will hear solutions from the perspective of Kelvin Cochran, the police, the fireman that was fired. We'll also hear from a senior pastor. Now, senior means they're older, folks, but senior means they're better as well. Senior means they have some experience. I'm not perfect, folks, but I'm the senior pastor of the First Southern Baptist Church and Messianic Fellowship. And as such, I have learned a lot in my 28 years. Well, there's another pastor, another senior pastor in New York, New York. Senior pastor Carter Conlon, senior pastor of Times Square Church in New York, a neighbor to my pastor and to my church in Harlem. So we'll hear his solutions from a senior pastor's perspective. And then we'll move from firemen and, and uh, pastors into another P word, politician. Because we're going to hear some solutions from a politician. A politician that is indeed my brother in Christ. His name is Ted Cruz. He's a Republican from Texas. He has also announced that his Republican presidential candidacy is for 2016. So we'll hear the perspective for solutions from a Christian politician. He is not a politician that is Christian. He is a Christian politician, and he'll talk to us about that solution. And then I told you Southern Baptists are excited about getting involved. I am as a Southern Baptist. I had the privilege in 207 to be the second vice president of our convention. And uh, now we have a new president in our convention. The new president of the Southern Baptist Convention is also a senior pastor at Cross Church. He is also a fellow Arkansas Traveler, Dr. Ronnie Floyd, President of the Southern Baptist Convention, Senior Pastor, will give perspective for solutions as a senior pastor, as a man who leads the largest denomination other than Roman Catholics in our nation. We have, depending upon whose numbers you read, but we have somewhere around 15 million people that name the name Southern Baptist. And Dr. Ronnie Floyd is our president. And he'll be giving there in Washington, D.C., his perspective from a senior pastor and from a leader, president of the Southern Baptist Convention. Now, we'll not only hear from preachers and politicians, but we're going to hear from a beautiful, beautiful lady, and I mean beautiful in every aspect, beautiful in every way that I can imagine, not only beautiful to the eye, but beautiful to the spirit, to the body, the soul, and the spirit. And her name is Brigitte Gabrielle. Brigitte Gabrielle. She is the founder of an organization called ACT, A-C-T. ACT for America. She will be talking about her expertise and her solutions for our nation. I talked a little while ago about Muslim problem. Well, Brigitte Gabrielle is an expert on Islam and global terrorism. And she will be sharing from Brigitte Gabrielle, we'll hear solutions for our problem. And then we'll move down to an educator, and we'll hear not only from politicians and preachers and women and men, but we'll hear from an educator, Dr. Wayne Grudem. Dr. Wayne Grudem is a research professor, not just a professor, but a research professor of theology and biblical studies. 
from nearby Phoenix here on the West Coast. And so we'll hear from Dr. Wayne Grudem solutions to our problems from a theological and a biblical perspective. And we're looking forward to that. Now, there's another minister of the gospel that will be sharing his solutions. I've met with him, I've prayed with him, I love him dearly in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is a bishop. Bishop E. W. Jackson will be sharing with us as founder of S-T-A-N-D. S-T-A-N-D stands for Staying True to America's Destiny. And we'll hear solutions from this bishop and this leader of STAND. And he is also the former Virginia Lieutenant Governor candidate. So again, a mixture of pastor and preacher and teacher and politician. And we'll hear what God has given him as solutions for our problems from Bishop E.W. Jackson. Also, another great church will be involved. We'll hear some solutions from one of the greatest churches in American history. Many of you know of a great mighty man of God of years gone past, Dwight L. Moody. You also know about Moody Church, Moody Bible Institute, and you will hear Dr. Erwin Lutzer share solutions from the perspective, again, of a senior pastor and the senior pastor of a very famous Moody Church in Chicago, Illinois. You'll hear Dr. Erwin Lutzer share his solutions as well. And then we're going to move down back to the court system. We're going to be hearing from the Supreme Court of the state of Alabama. Many years ago, Rusty Thomas and I and others went down there and stood with Judge Roy Moore. And when they started to bring that monument, that several ton monument, they were going to move it out the door, the only door that it would fit through, and those of us that were there laid down and said, you will not take that monument out except you take it over our bodies. Well, I'm here to tell you, folks, I'm thankful that they decided not to do that, not to drag it over us, because that would have been the end of our lives. But they took it back and put it in a closet. And as you know, Chief Justice Roy Moore was fired and, of course, we travel around the country with that monument and with that judge. Well, at this meeting in Washington, this meeting for solutions, we're going to hear Chief Justice Roy Moore, who is back in the helm. He is back in the leadership role, elected by the people. You're going to hear how he came up with some solutions for his situation. And so you're going to hear solutions from Chief Justice Roy Moore, the Alabama Supreme Court. And, of course, in the beginning, the middle, and the end, the leader of FRC, Family Research Council, Brother Tony Perkins, will be facilitating and bringing all this together, bringing us solutions from these great men and women of God and talking about those solutions. So we'll hear solutions from the perspective of the President of Family Research Council, Brother Tony Perkins. And then we're going to hear from one of the men, one of the godly men, one of the anointed men of God that was attacked by a sodomite. You see, the sodomite mayor of Houston attacked five pastors. She attacked them by filing a subpoena for their sermon. And so when we're in D.C., we will hear how do we find solutions from Dr. Steve Riggle. He's the senior pastor of Grace Community Church in Houston, Texas. One of the Houston Five, we will hear solutions from one of the Houston Five, who was subpoenaed by the Sodomite mayor for his stand 
on biblical marriage. And we'll not only hear from these pastors and these educators, these men and these women, but we'll hear also from a gentleman by the name of Joel Rosenberg. Joel Rosenberg is founder of an organization called the Joshua Fund. Remember Joshua? The Joshua Fund. He is a New York Times best-selling author. New York Times best-selling author. Joel Rosenberg will be there with us and share solutions from a writer's perspective. Solutions from an educated man. Solutions from a man who is New York Times best-selling author there. Joel Rosenberg will share solutions to our problems. And then we move back to politics. We move through men and women and politics and preaching and so forth. And then we'll move uh, toward the end of our meeting with a member of the United States House of Representatives. He is the majority whip of the United States House of Representatives, and his name is Steve Scalise, Representative Steve Scalise. will share with us solutions from a political perspective, and especially from the House of Representatives as the majority whip. We will hear him share some of his solutions as well. And we move now from politics into television and radio and so forth. We will hear solutions from a man who hosts Fox News and commentary, a Mr. Todd Starnes. We will hear his perspective on solutions for our country, Todd Starnes. And last but not least, we will hear from a president of CrossExamined.org, president of CrossExamined.org, Dr. Frank Turek. Dr. Frank Turek will share his perspective from a legal aspect, from being cross-examined and leading that organization called CrossExamined.org. And so we will hear from all of these men and women, and their perspective will be dealing with the erosion of our religious liberty and how we can get our churches back on target, back online for what they need to be doing. And I would trust and I would hope that if you uh, can go, uh, you will join us there. I'm going to give you the 800 number again just as soon as I find it. <laughs> the 800 number, if you'd like to find out more about it, that 800 number is 800-225-4008 to register for this briefing and for this solutions meeting. We're going to be talking about a lot of things. We're going to have, for example, uh, it's going to start on Wednesday, and we'll go and talk about solutions on Capitol Hill. The exhibits will be open and uh, there at the Regency Ballroom. And uh, the U.S. Capitol Heritage Tour will go there and see what's going on.